What up everybody on YouTube? Now, this video is going to be a little bit different. I told you all that I was going to start making some videos that are not boxing related. Every once in a while I like to talk about other things. And I've even tried making other channels and uh, what I find is that, you know, boxing is really my bread and butter. I don't keep up with other things as much. Not enough to really have a channel dedicated. Um, so, I mean, it just... Things just don't pan out the way that I'd hope. But this video is not going to be boxing related whatsoever. This is a somewhat of a response video to Red Fox. If you're not subscribed to Red Fox, I suggest that you go ahead and check them out. I've been watching Red Fox since before I was uh, making videos. Um, back when he was uh, the Fox Strikes. But um, I listened to a video that he did yesterday where he talked about the merger between um, Disney, or, you know, basically Disney absorbed 20. 20th century and 21st century Fox. It's not official, but they've agreed to terms. So basically what that means is um, in about six months, unless the government steps in and says that they don't, you know, that they aren't going to allow them to, this is pretty much a go. It's pretty much going to happen. Uh, now, because it's going to take about six months maybe even a little bit longer. We don't know exactly what this means for 20th and 21st Century Fox. All we know is that they've agreed to uh, sell Disney, X-Men, Fantastic Four, um, really all their movies, to be honest. Um, Avatar, which isn't completely owned by Fox, to my knowledge, it's actually owned by James Cameron, but um, there's a good relationship with him and uh, Disney right now. I mean, for those of you who don't know, Disney World has um, the land of Pandora, so which a lot of people were complaining about because it wasn't a Disney movie. And now looks like Disney has pretty much shut those people up because... If this merger does go through, if the government doesn't stop it, then it's a Disney movie. Uh, along with a countless other movies that are going to be under the Disney catalog now. And also, uh, because Fox owned a good portion of Hulu, um, that means that now Disney will now own whatever share Hulu of Hulu that Fox had. Um, I heard the number 40%, but it might even be more than that. Um, but I mean, that's, that's a big stake to have it in Hulu. So, and for anybody who keeps up with streaming services and entertainment, um, Disney was already talking about creating a streaming service. I have a feeling that um, Hulu, they're probably going to have it where it's an add-on onto Hulu. So, Disney's already going to make money off of Hulu, and they'll make even more money off of a additional subscription that you have to purchase, uh, that you can attach to your Hulu. So, Disney's making big moves. Um, I really don't know what this means for the entertainment industry. Um... One thing that I find very interesting is um, Universal Studios, as far as their theme parks are concerned, they um, they have a Marvel superhero island at Islands of Adventures, which is all Marvel superheroes. Um, and it does include the Incredible Hulk, Thor, and Iron Man. It also includes X-Men, which, if the, like I said, if this merger does go through all the way, then that means... You know, di all, all these Disney properties, which they weren't Disney when that portion of their theme park was built at the time. But 
it's just very strange that you have these properties um, that are associated or supposed to be associated with Universal. It turns out they're actually owned by Disney now, who is their competitor. Um, the other thing that I'm hearing things about is The Simpsons. Now, I mean, really, when Disney bought Marvel, it really didn't affect Marvel Superhero Island. Um, there's not any talks about them removing any of that stuff. They don't have to rename the Incredible Hulk roller coaster or any, anything like that, to my knowledge. Um, I guess it had something to do with whatever contract they had with Marvel. Um, when Disney bought Marvel, Universal was still uh, protected. So, um, if that's the case, I'm pretty sure they probably have something in place for The Simpsons as well. And even if they don't, I think it's still not going to really affect Universal because um, The Simpsons are not completely owned by Fox. Um, Matt Groening still is the owner of The Simpsons, or part owner, I should say. And not only that, but the voice actors, a couple years ago... The voice actors decided to take a cut in pay per episode. So they were, I don't remember the exact figures, but they were getting paid uh, so much money per episode that they voiced. And uh, they all came together and decided that they were willing to take a cut in pay uh, in exchange for part ownership in the show. And um, I think that happened when they had when the show was like in its 25th season or what. I mean, it's amazing how long that show has been on the air. Um, very long time. But um, because it wasn't completely owned by Fox. And if you notice the Simpsons, they kind of do they they can they can make fun of Fox and Fox not do anything because they have a special contract where the um fox cannot overstep their boundaries on anything that is considered creative that's why you can watch the simpsons and they'll take jabs at fox and fox doesn't threaten to throw them off the air or anything like that because they can't in their contract they have the final say so on all creative uh ideas that includes the jokes so i don't think Simpsons is really going to be affected uh, by this. It's just very strange that if this goes through, um, which I'm pretty sure it will, Disney's just a very powerful company, and I'm pretty sure they they will make they can sweeten up the deal for the government where it won't go where they'll make sure it goes through. But um, yeah, I just think that's going to be something that. Disney is not really going to be able to touch. Uh, not only that, but I don't see why they would want to touch it. I don't think The Simpsons is really a Disney-ish property anyways. Anything that Disney would try to do to alter the show, even if they could, would just severely damage it. The people who watch the show, they watch it for a reason. And it's not anything that Disney would be able to improve on. Um, in fact, I think on a lot of these properties that disney has now purchased i think um probably the plan is going to be to uh just leave it just rake in the money once uh the money is not coming in as frequently maybe they'll step in and take charge but as long as these properties are successful i don't think they're really gonna mess with anything you know uh years ago uh, Chevy, you know, they, they had the, uh, Nova, which wouldn't sell in, in Mexico because it was translated into the Chevy no-go. So if it ain't fixed, or sorry, if it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix it. Sorry, I did work today. So if I seem a little bit off, uh, that's why. But, um, yeah, it, it's very interesting as to what's going to happen with entertainment. I mean, basically, all Disney has to do is buy Comcast and they pretty much own everything. 
because Com Comcast is also universal. So it's really their only competitor and it's really no competition in comparison. Um, so it's, it is what it is, you know, but on to the next thing that I want to talk about because, um, I think Fox just, he, he really inspired me to do this video. Um, and like I said, there's been some content. I still have some content I'm going to be putting out on this channel. That's not boxing related. It's just, I haven't had the time to do it. But um, I'm aiming for sometime in January. And it is movie related. But anyways. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the controversy with Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. How people are bitching and moaning about Johnny Depp playing Grindelwald. Um, first off, I cannot stand when recasts are done. If a re if a recast is not necessary, then don't do it. It just throws everything off. Um, even if the actor is just as talented, uh, they have their own spin and personality. That's why people have their favorite James Bonds. People have their James Bonds that they love, and they have their James Bonds that they can't stand. And um, that's because every actor just brings something different to the table. Um, so for that reason, recasts are just not very popular. And the whole thing... Well, first off, I did watch Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. I'm not really a big Harry Potter fan. I don't hate Harry Potter, but it's just never been something that's really interested me. And um, when I went and saw Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, I was very impressed. I felt like the uh, fact that Johnny Depp was casted as Grindelwald. Um, spoiler alert, you know. Um, <laughs> but um, I thought that was a bigger twist than the actual plot twist in the movie. Um, they could have very easily just made Colin Farrell look different and, uh, they didn't. They casted a huge actor in Johnny Depp and I, I just wasn't expecting it. Um, uh, not only because it's Johnny Depp, but because Grindelwald, if I'm not mistaken, is supposed to be British and Warner Brother Warner Bros and, um, and, um, what is that woman's name? Uh, J.K. Rowling. Sorry, I had a brain fart. They were very adamant that they wanted British actors to play British parts. So I thought they were going to be just as adamant with this, and they weren't. But anyways, it was a pretty good movie. If you haven't seen it, I suggest that you give it a try. But let's go ahead and get to the controversy. As far as... Uh, Johnny Depp is concerned. It's a very unfortunate situation because Johnny Depp is the right man for the job. All right. And the thing is, when you get accused of certain. See, society, well, Hollywood and society <laughs> are, are both in a very weird place right now. Um. And a lot of it is really affected by social justice warriors. I mean, they have this mindset that when a woman tells you that she's been raped, abused, or anything of that sort, that um, you should automatically believe them. And I think that's a very dangerous precedent to set because, I mean, if... If a man argues with his wife and she either loses the argument or she feels that he's in the wrong or whatever, you know, regardless if she is in the wrong or in the right, if she, she would just turn around and say that he raped her, then he could go to prison. 
if we set this precedent of, well, don't vic, you know, don't further victimize the victim. And I do believe you shouldn't, but I think that comes in the um, form. I think that comes in the form of hearing them out, being there for them emotionally. You know, you don't you don't question them in a way where you're questioning whether they're telling what they're telling you is true or not. But when it comes down to it, you need to really do your investigation. Because if a man and a woman go out and they have some drinks and he didn't roofie her. And she and he wasn't purposely trying to get her so drunk that she just throw her inhibitions to the wind. If she does that on her own, I don't believe that he should be punished for it just because she has some regrets the next morning. It was consensual. Now, of course, if if he did do something like that on purpose, then yeah, that is rape. And it's just a very, very thin line there. It's one of the hardest things to prove. And the thing about these kinds of crimes is that they are very, very serious. Which is why they should be investigated very seriously. Don't just take the woman's word for it. It's like I said, you don't further victimize the victim. You be open and you listen. and But at the end of the day, you don't just condemn the, the guy either. You know, it's very possible that there could be some miscommunication or... She's just a good actor. It's like I said, I'm not I'm not saying that women don't get raped because that's definitely not true. But I don't believe every woman who says that she's raped was actually raped. I mean, there's all kinds of stories. There's there's a woman who purposely looked up child pornography on her boyfriend's uh laptop and then reported him and when the police went and you know, investigated the laptop, they found a video that she forgot was on there of her screwing the dog. I'm not telling y'all to be um, funny or nasty, but these things do happen. And I'm not making that shit up. That's something that really happened. Um, the Hodge twins covered it. So... I don't remember how long ago it was. It's been at least a couple years. But people, not just women, but people in general can be vindictive. And for those reasons, you can't just believe a woman when she says she's been raped or physically abused or sexually abused. And if you don't believe me that this is just that serious, I mean, look. Johnny Depp was not found guilty of this crime, but yet people are disgusted that he's been casted to play Grindelwald in the second movie. It's really sad. So, I mean, it's just this whole victim mentality. There's, you know, the problem that I have with social justice warriors is they think everything is problematic. They think... You know, every man is a rapist. They think every minority is severely disadvantaged. They believe that white guilt is a real thing. And all that shit is just all bullshit. I don't believe in any of that shit. And I'm a minority. But I can tell you what, I've never been on food stamps. I've never been homeless. I never, I don't know what it's like to not be able to eat. I went to school. I had all my school supplies. I may have not had the best clothes going to school, but that shit ain't even necessary. Just as long as you ain't going to school naked. That's what, that's really what, what it comes down to. Do you have your supplies and are you clothed? I can say that I was, and I did, I did have my supplies. So... It's 
it's just become way out of hand and it's gotten to the point where a lot of these companies are pressured into being quote unquote forward thinkers. And um, there ain't nothing forward thinking about this shit. About you're going to tell me that I'm a victim and I've been victimized since before I was even in my mother's womb. Nah, you don't have that kind of power over my life. Fuck out of here with that shit. But there's people who buy into this shit. And it's crept into Hollywood. You know, you see them trying to push these agendas and in these movies and everything. And they have to have a strong female role. Um, People get pissed off over the most retarded ass shit. When they made Ghost in a Shell, it didn't do too well just because they casted um, Scarlett Johansson and they wanted the character to be Japanese. When if you look at Ghost in... First off, if you look at half of these animes, they make their characters look white to begin with. I mean, let's be real. Do you honestly think that Goku is supposed to be Japanese with blonde hair? Yeah, that's what I thought. So, and the other thing is, half the time, the other half of the time, a lot of times you can't tell what race they're supposed to be. And in Ghost in a Show, she's a fucking robot. They could have made her black. They could have made her Chinese. They could have made her Arabic. They, they could make her whatever they want. Because robots don't have a race. But this is where we've gotten to when it comes to entertainment. Entertainment has to be done where everybody's supposed to be pleased. Well, let me burst that bubble. You're not going to please everybody. Because I'm not pleased. I'm not pleased with this pandering, you know, just... Because I'm a minority, that's why you, you're going to cast Selma Hayek in a movie uh, just to appease me? No, fuck you. That doesn't appease me. You know, how, you know a lot of people made, um, made a big stink about the Oscars and, and blacks not being nominated and, and all this stuff. And there's some truth to it, but... It also shouldn't be to the point where you're casting people just simply to appease people of that color. Because I'll tell you right now, I don't give a fuck if you cast Selma Hayek or Antonio Banderas. Because at the end of the day, that's their money. They don't even know I exist. I mean, yeah, I I'm happy that they can go and do something that they enjoy and make lots and lots of money. But... At the end of the day, if you cast Bruce Willis over Antonio Banderas, it's not going to bother me none. Let them make their money. Who Who's the right guy for the job? Who's the right woman for the job? That's what I care about. I didn't give a fuck that uh, Will Smith was casted to play James West. I gave a shit that the movie sucked balls. And me, I'm the kind of person that I don't base a movie on if it's good or not solely on the plot. I also base it on how much time it takes to watch the movie. I don't like to watch movies that are two hours long a lot of times because they may be good movies, but they're not two hours long good. They're more like an hour and a half good, an hour and 15 minutes good, you know. But if you have a good movie like the Dark Knight, tri you know, the Dark Knight trilogy, where, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, second and third were a little over two hours long. But because the movie was that good, I was that invested in the story where it didn't feel like it was that long. Then that's a good movie. But we got movies like Australia that the first 45 minutes of this three hour movie were just absolute garbage. And then it 
then it got interesting. It's like, you could have cut this movie in half. You could have had two movies. And yeah, I like Hugh Jackman, but that wasn't one of his better movies because, like I said, first 45 minutes were were pretty shit. So, and, and I mean, it also has to do with what kind of movies you like. I like action and comedy. So action comedies are my, that's my bread and butter. That's my favorite type of movie. Next in line, probably horror. If you could throw some comedy in there, that's not too cheesy, then yeah, I'll like that too. But I know I've gone off on a bunch of tangents just now, but back to Johnny Depp. It's terrible what people were trying to do to him, trying to make him lose work just because a wo- just because somebody with a vagina accused him of abusing her, but he was found not guilty. If he's not guilty, it doesn't matter who accused him. If he's not if he's innocent, he's innocent. It's not right to punish somebody who's innocent. And I know this ain't a perfect world, but we should be striving for justice and punishing somebody for something that they didn't do. That's not justice. And then the last thing I want to talk about real quick is uh, Star Wars. I have not watched the newest Star Wars. Um, To be honest, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. Um, the original trilogy is all right by me. The prequels, although a lot of people make them out to be worse than what they really are. Well, except for the set. I'm sorry, but Clone Wars, in my opinion, is garbage. But, um, episode one and episode three, episode one was decent. Episode three, um, was my favorite out of the second trilogy. But um, I, it's just never really been something that interested me. Um, and shout out to 10 players because I think they put it best. You're not going to recapture what you got from the first trilogy. It's just not going to happen. Um, in my opinion, I think Star Wars is overrated. And I know I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for saying that. But it's just my opinion. I think Star Wars is overrated. Like I said, original trilogy, you don't really got no arguments from me. But people want to base the whole series off of that trilogy. And the fact of the matter is, Clone Wars exists. The fact of the matter is... Um, even though I haven't seen it, but from what I'm hearing, The Last Jedi is, is, is garbage. It exists. I'll be honest. I enjoy the Star Trek movies more. And I, and, and let me tell you this. I cannot stand the Star Trek shows. And I, I. I'll be honest, I've never really sat down and tried to watch the older movies, but something tells me I wouldn't care for those too much either. But as for the ones with Chris Pine playing um, Captain Kirk, I think those movies are spectacular. And what I really like about them is, even though I watch them all, if I were to watch Into Darkness without watching the first one, I would still like it. I don't. I feel like every movie stands on its own. And I don't feel that way with Star Star Wars. It's, you got to watch them all. Or. You're missing a whole lot. And the other thing is. I'm a guy who really likes comedy. I, th- I, I don't think. Star Wars has enough comedy. For my liking. It has some comedy. But it's it's different. It's a very different kind of comedy. And it's less frequent. 
you know, I, I feel like when I watch these new Star Trek movies, I'm either laughing or I'm on the edge of my seat because there's action going on or both. So it, it ain't no disrespect to Star Wars. It's like I said, original trilogy is good by me. Um, but a lot of the other stuff is questionable. Um, so the fact that The Last Jedi is not a good movie from what I hear, it doesn't really bother me. Um, I think, um, I think in some ways Disney has just bitten off a bit more than they could chew. Because when George Lucas was at the helm of uh, of Star Wars, he only came out with one every three years. And then, of course, there was a long gap in between the first trilogy and the second trilogy. I don't remember what the exact gap is, but I want to say it was like 15 years. Something like that. So there was a lot of time in between these movies. Three years in between... The ones in the trilogies and the tr like 10, 15 years between the actual trilogies themselves. Um, if you notice, ever since Disney started putting out these Star Wars movies, there's one every year. Since 2015, every December, you could you you can literally set your watch to it every every December. There's a new Star Wars movie. And now next year. If I'm not mistaken. They're going to have two. So. You're going to get more frequent Star Wars movies. You get more frequent. Um, Marvel movies. Now with the purchase of. X-Men. Fantastic Four. And whatever else. I mean. I'm pretty sure we're going to see, maybe not double, but we're, we're going to see an increase. So, I think they they uh, have, a, they've bitten off a little bit more than they could chew. Um, I will say, I have high hopes. I mean, like I said, you know, it, it's terrible. It is terrible that what they're doing to Star Wars if it's true. Because it's a staple. It's it's a lot of people's childhood. And it's sad to see, you know... It, it wasn't part of my childhood. But for those of you that it was... I'm sure it's sad to see it take the turn that it's taking. Um, but I mean... We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But I have high hopes. I remember I was going with this. I have high hopes because... Um, Bob Iger, who is the CEO of, uh, of Disney, he was actually supposed to step down next year, either next year or 2019. I think I, I, I'm wrong. 2019. And there was even rumors that he was going to run for president in 2020. Um, which now that is definitely not going to happen because Bob Iger has decided that he's going to stay CEO for at least a couple more years. I believe 2021 or 2022. I don't remember which one it is. But he's supposed to be staying. CEO. And Bob Iger. I'm not going to say that everything he touches. Turns to gold. But he does more. Right than wrong. He, he makes more good decisions. Than bad decisions. Because. I think. He's done. They've done one hell of a job with, with Marvel. And um, even though I'm not a Star Wars fan, I think that they've made some good moves with Star Wars. Um, you know they. You know the uh, Rogue One, wasn't bad. But uh, and, and now, you know they're making a whole Star Wars hotel. And it's supposed to be like the most immersive shit ever. So, to Disney, the, these properties are more than just movies. You gotta remember that. They got certain things that are planned for theme parks, merchandise, 
I mean, they're gonna make they're gonna make their investment back. That's for sure. But I think it's good news that Bob Iger decided that he's gonna stay at the helm for now, um, because it would be things would be very questionable because nobody could really think of anybody who can take over, who's going to um, really be able to handle the responsibility because there's there's a lot of responsibility there. I mean, you're you're talking about the biggest multimedia company in the world. It's like I said, all they got to do is buy Comcast and that's it. If that happens, you got Disney and you got Indy and that's it. But anyways, I ain't talking about Indiana Jones. <laughs> but uh, this video uh, is going a lot longer than what I really had anticipated. I'm not even really going to edit this because it's going to take a hell of a lot of time <laughs> and um, a lot of work. I think for the rest of the year, I'm going to um, hold back on a lot of the editing. It's fun, but it's very time consuming. I do plan on hitting the ground running in January 2018. But anyways, to all my subscribers, anybody watching my videos or if you just so happen to stomp on this video, I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Peace.